Hello, this is Clint Halsted, and this is uh, Introduction to Microprocessors. I'm using uh, Designing Embedded Systems with PIC Microcontrollers, Principles, and Applications, Second Edition with Tim Wilmshurst. Currently, I'm going to go over help with homework problem 3.2. Okay, because there was some concern about this problem. So, if you look on the screen, the homework problem says to... <coughs> Let's actually look at the homework problem. Homework problem 2 says complete the timing diagram of figure 3.14. So basically what I want you to do is use this figure to complete this diagram. So if you look at the figure, what we have is we have, um, we have a read-write signal going to the input of an AND gate. We have a port select going the, to the other input of the AND gate. Then we have um, an output enable 1 signal going to a tri-state buffer and we have the external pin input 1 and the data bus 1. Uh, and then of course this is copied for, for all the different ports. We have port 1, 2, 3, 4, so in this case we have port 0 and 1. We may have 2, 3, 4, 5, but we're just going to focus on uh, the number 1 port at this time. And just know that it applies to all the other pins as well. Okay, so what's going to happen as far as the timing diagram? We want to be able to to be able to do uh, timing diagrams. So we're going to work on the parallel port read cycle timing diagram. <clears throat> okay. Well, this is not exactly like problem 3.2 because I don't want to give away the answer, but I'm going to do one that's similar to it. Um, now, in, this, in the previous homework problem, we had a read uh, timing waveform that looked like this. I'm going to use the same read waveform and I'm going to use the same port select signal except that I'm going to add Now, before the last problem we used this read write signal and then this port select signal except now I'm going to add another port select pulse here whereas this one is going to re represent a read I'm sorry a, a, a write when when write is low this represents a write cycle and now this is going to represent a read cycle because this port select is going high when read signal is high so you can see the similarities between the one we did before and the one we're doing now. So before we did a write cycle, now we're going to do a read. <clears throat> so the best way to evaluate this problem is to add this signal called output enable, which I added and I, I color coded it red and put a red, red here. So I added a, a waveform here, a line for a waveform. Now <clears throat> output enable, which goes to the buffer, the way the tri-state buffer works is Whenever the output enable on the buffer goes to a logic 1, then the buffer will pass whatever data is on external input into the data onto the data bus. Now when output enable is low, the buffer is said to be tri-stated. What that means is the output is just going to be uh, a high Z, what we call it, high impedance, or an, uh, another word for saying just disconnected. So when output enable is low, there is no connection from external input to data bus 1. Data bus 1 will just be floating really um, for, for this problem. It will just be, just be floating. So the way we're going to designate uh, floating or high Z is we're just going to use this grayed out color. We call it high Z which um, equals you know disconnected. So high Z equals disconnected or floating, whatever you want to call it. We're going to use this little gray color to kind of designate that. So, so let's let's look at the output enable signal first. Now, since there's an AND gate here, when read write is high and port select is high, then output enable is going to be a one. Any other time, the output enable is going to be a zero. So let's see when we have read write a one and port select a one. Let's go down through here. So we have read write 1 and port select 0 so they're not both 1 now here we have them both 0 now we have a 0 1 we have a 0 0 now we have a 1 0 and now finally we have a 1 1 <clears throat> so this is the only place where we have both read write and port select a 1 so this is where we're going to get um, our, our logic 1 so what I'm going to do Let's copy this signal. 
Now there's going to be a little bit of a delay. So this this signal is going to alpha enable is going to be low this entire time, except it's going to go high at this point. But remember, there's always a little bit of a delay. So let's put a little bit of a delay there. I can stretch this out all the way to zero. So this is what the output enable signal is going to look like. Now once now let's continue to look at read, write, and port select. Now port select's a one, read write's a one, so we get a one. And then port select goes low, and so we get a low on output enable. So for the remainder of the time, output enable is going to be a zero. So that is our timing diagram. I'm going to leave the little cursor here to just indicate that this port select going high is causing output enable to go high. Okay? That's typically the way we kind of indicate cause and effect is by doing that sort of thing. Okay. Okay, so now that we've evaluated output enable, now we can evaluate uh, the tri-state buffer and see, okay, um, what's what's going to happen here. Now before we can do that, <coughs> we have to let's put um, external pin one right here because this this one occurs first actually so okay so first we have to put a signal on external pin one so let's just assume let's just let's just draw us a signal here uh, just some sort of arbitrary signal let's say that that we're going to force um, external pin one to be high at this point. <clears throat> okay, so let's just let's just assume that this is what the signal is going to look like. Now this this is supposed to be given to you, external pin one. So this is not something you have to determine on your own. Okay, so let's just say that this is what was given to you. Let's make sure that this one's low at this point. Okay. Okay, so this external pin is, is low during this write cycle and then it goes high during this read cycle. <clears throat> so what's going to happen on... The question is, what is going to be output on data bus 1? Well, when output enable is 0, then the output of the tri-state buffer is just going to be high impedance. So let's look at output enable. So every time that it's 0, uh, the the tri-state buffer is just going to be high impedance. So let's draw that here. So anytime output enable is zero, we have to draw high impedance. Okay. So that means that all the way up until this point, it's going to be high impedance because output enable is zero through that entire time. So let's just take this signal and we stretch it all the way out. <coughs> okay. Now, we're going to see that when output enable goes high, okay, then whatever is on external pin is going to be transferred to data bus. So, <clears throat> let's copy this signal and then paste it. So, <clears throat> at this point, when this goes high, it's going to output a 1 because external pin is a 1. But there's going to be a, a little bit of a delay here. So let's, let's put in a little bit of a delay. It wants to start here, but let's de delay it a little bit uh, like that. Okay? And let's stretch out this, this high impedance. Oh, I grabbed the wrong thing. We'll, we'll stretch out this high impedance signal. So it looks kind of like that. <clears throat> so it stays high Z until this point. And now... When output enable goes low again, then the data bus is going to be high impedance. So let's let's draw that on the screen. Okay. Okay. So this will be high impedance, and all the way up until this point. Output enable zero. So anytime output enable zero, you get a high impedance. That's just the way the the tri-state buffer works. So if if you don't really understand how tri-state buffers work. Again, this is not a digital design class. This is a microprocessor class, so you have to review your digital design principles. Maybe go to the internet, type um, tri-state buffer, 
and it'll help you understand how these tri-state buffers work. But um, anyway, that completes the timing diagram. We'll send this to the back, make it look a little bit better. So that's what's going to be output on the data bus. So um, this is going to be called a, a read cycle because it's taking whatever's on the external uh, pin, which is a one, and it's it's uh, reading it and providing it onto the internal data bus for the microprocessor to read it. Okay. So thank you very much. We'll see you for the next lesson.